Welcome back to Dragon Exotics and today we will be continuing our Audible series and we will be doing Legends Turn to Ash Chapter 2. So stay tuned. Legends Turn to Ash Chapter 2 Confusion at its Peak Whisper! Hey Whisper! I opened my eyes to see Sierra staring at me with her big blue round eyes. Come on silly, it's almost time to go home. Sierra insisted as she poked my shoulder, which ached for some reason. What just happened? Where am I? Back on the mountain? How? I thought I was dead. There were a bunch of dragons too. What in the world? Yep, it's official. I am utterly confused. Oh hey, let's add insane as well. I am thoroughly confused and completely out of my mind. Oh, uh, sorry, I was taking a nap. I had to make some excuse. But I guess the one I came up with was a little lame. I could have made up some crazy story, but nope. That would have taken the brain power that I didn't feel like giving up. Okay, so maybe what I told her wasn't the whole truth. But how am I supposed to tell her that I was kidnapped by a dragon, knocked unconscious, and somehow appeared here? I can't even imagine to explain that to myself, for crying out loud. I can't tell anybody about this either. If I did, they would think I'm even crazier than they already think I am. Plus, if someone started a rumor about seeing a dragon, the government may check into it. Yeah, no, that's totally not happening. Oh man, it gives me chills just thinking of what a dragon would do to me if he found out that I told the entire world about their secret. He already wanted to kill me just because I was human. Or maybe not? I don't know. That guy, Beckett? Yeah, he was human too, so I don't really know what's going on here. Sierra helped me up, breaking my train of thought and smiled once more. Come on, let's go. Isn't it a little too early for us to be leaving? I asked as Sierra dragged me down the path. I'd swear she was part mountain goat. Look at the sky, silly, she pointed up. The rain kind of ruined our day, but don't worry, it was still really fun. I nodded, kind of shocked by the rain. We headed down the mountain, trying not to trip on the rocks below us. I say we, but I actually mean I, because I was the only one who had to focus on not tripping or sliding in the mud. Mr. Jackwell, who was using his coat as an umbrella, met us at the bottom of the mountain and sighed. You guys are the last ones. Hurry up and get in the van. As Sierra and I trotted over to the van, droplets of rain tickled my nose, slowly began to sprinkle, and by the time we both were seated on the van, it was downpouring. As we drove back to the school, I blabbed to Sierra about homework and other stuff that would shift my mind away from reality. It didn't feel real. Nothing felt real, and I was genuinely confused. Was it all a dream? Before I knew it, we were back at school, and Sierra's mom had picked her up. I glanced down at my bag hanging from my shoulder and grabbed my umbrella from it. Why I had brought an umbrella, I had no clue. My best guess was that I forgot to take it out the last time it rained. It had been raining for the whole ride to the school and didn't look like it was going to let up, at least not anytime soon. Quickly, I opened my gray dotted umbrella and headed home. After a long, lonely traipse, I finally entered my neighborhood. Stars were beginning to speckle in the fading sky. It still doesn't make sense. Dragons exist. It's like a dream come true. Though I wonder what they're talking about. What do they mean by I'm destined? Suddenly, every light in the neighborhood clicked off, and I was standing face to face with a dark figure. At least, I thought it was a figure. It looked more like a blob of black mist. Huh. Why the heck would those traitorous worms choose you? Whatever. You will die like the rest of them soon enough. A deep voice spoke, then faded into the night. Chills ran down my spine, and I stood still, eyes wide open and heart racing. No, 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 no. What's happening? My perfect life is gone. All I had to worry about was school, and now there's some creepy guy, correction, creepy creature miss thing who wants me dead, and these weird dragons who think I'm some destined person. Man, I seriously don't understand anything. Can this day just be over already? Taking a deep breath, I closed my eyes and took a step forward, ignoring the voice. At that moment, all the neighborhood lights popped back on as if nothing happened. My head was spinning like a top and my heart pounded violently inside of my chest. Calm down, calm down, I whispered to myself, attempting to relieve the pain my brain felt. 
Cautiously, I walked along the path that led to my house, searching for that suspicious being. I could have sworn someone was following me, but each time I turned around, nothing was there. At last, I reached the safety of my home and ran inside, locking the door behind me. I continued to breathe heavily as I leaned my body against the front door, water dripping from my hair as I slowly closed the umbrella and rubbed my freezing arms. My parents were in the room watching a movie, but I had no clue what my brother was up to. I guess it didn't matter for sneaking purposes. Carefully and silently, I rushed into my room, plopped onto my bed, and pressed my face against the pillow, groaning. Quickly rolling over onto my back, I entangled my body in the comforter and sighed. So today was quite interesting, wasn't it? It started off with a field trip that led to a kidnapping that then led to confusion. Oh, and just when I thought it couldn't get any weirder, I met some crazy mist thing who claims I will die. I'm so confused, I said to myself, frustrated. Though, was that whole kidnapping thing even real? Wasn't I dreaming? My train of thought was interrupted when my brother opened the door. My attention quickly turned to him. Who are you talking to? He said. No one. Go away, I yelled. He shrugged and shut the door as he left. I closed my eyes, hoping to forget everything that happened, but all I'd managed to do was enter a land of fantasy and dreams. I woke up the next morning with heavy eyes. The sun peered through the window, and I had almost forgotten about what had happened yesterday. I wanted to fall back asleep and wait for the whole situation to blow over. Hesitantly, I hopped out of bed and opened my closet door. I don't know what to wear, I mumbled to myself. I ended up putting on some jeans and a long-sleeved gray and pink shirt after 10 minutes of debating what to wear. At least it's Saturday and school is done and over with, I said to myself with a slightly more positive attitude. As I stretched, a mark on my hand caught my eye. Yanking my wrist toward me, I screamed, what the heck is this? I'm positive it wasn't there yesterday. Wait, no, oh no, oh no. Frozen in shock, I sat down on the floor and sorted through my memories of yesterday. It wasn't a dream. How could it not be a dream? This can't be happening. Wait, is this snowflake the shape I saw when my hands started to glow? What even is it? Oh, and the more important question is, how am I supposed to hide this from everyone? Geez, I can picture it now. Sarah will walk up to me and ask, Hey, what's that on your hand? Is it seriously a tattoo? That's kind of cool. I would have to convince her that it isn't, and I hate tattoos, but then she wouldn't believe me. The rumor would spread across the whole school and my life would be over. I stood back up and looked around to make sure nobody noticed me. My door had been closed, but with the stuff that has been happening, I couldn't be sure I was alone. A cold breeze brushed my skin as I glanced over to the window that was now open. I didn't open that. I walked over to the window to close it, but a familiar voice froze me in my tracks. I knew I had to turn around, but I seriously dreaded it. Hey, what's up, human? Spoke the voice in a light tone. You, I yelled, falling back down to the floor. In front of me was a dragon resting its paws on the window from the outside. Her eyes pointed at me like daggers. Her great ice blue wings blocked the view of the sun, and her narrow head was tilted toward me. Oh, come on, don't you recognize me? No? Let me give you a hint. My name starts with an A. I sighed and facepalmed. Yeah, I clearly remember who you are, Alzora, right? Why are you even here? She growled a bit under her breath, but managed to keep up her seemingly forced light attitude. Right, though that's kind of mean to ask why I'm here. Standing up once more, I apologized. Sorry, I'm just confused. Yesterday was weird. First I was kidnapped by you, then I met something that told me I was going to die. This isn't how most normal teenagers' lives go. Completely ignoring the death threat, she replied, Maybe so, but you aren't a normal teenager anymore. You're destined. Her face dropped into disappointment, just like me. Okay, slow down. You guys keep calling me destined. Would you please explain to me what that is, and why you keep acting like that's a bad thing? I thought being destined was a good thing, I asked frustrated. I can't believe nobody told you the situation. Beckett was supposed to fill you in. But I guess that fool wasn't up to the task after all. Okay then, I guess if I have to explain it, I will. She rolled her eyes and took a seat on my soft carpet, her tail swishing back and forth. It all started 20 years ago. I hadn't hatched yet, but I have heard stories from the elders. 
It was a time when dragons began to disappear again, but a legend appeared out of nowhere. Don't ask me where or why, because I don't know. It stated that there would be three humans, each bonded to their own dragon. Once these three pairs were gathered, they would save the whole dragon race, but it never stated how. The legend also spoke of an evil force of destruction, fire, ice, lightning. With these, the earth will die. There's a little bit more to it, something about how darkness swallowed the world, but I don't remember that bit. At the time, the elders thought nothing of the legend. When the prophecy of destruction began, though, they changed their minds. Honestly, I don't understand the legend, but whatever. I just do what the elders tell me to. You may not have noticed, but small unnatural phenomenons have been occurring all over the planet, so they started searching for the others who were destined. The problem was that the first destined pair was lightning, then came fire, and now ice. The exact three powers meant to destroy the world. I know you're confused, but you're not the only one. I mean, think about it. No one is prepared to hear that they're going to destroy everything and everything they hold dear. Whoa, whoa, hold up. So what I'm hearing, I said, trying to make sense of what Elzora was saying, is that three random humans are mysteriously paired with three random dragons, right? Just because three pairs happen to represent fire, ice, and lightning doesn't necessarily mean it's us who are going to destroy the world. I mean, maybe there's some other force out there with those elements. She looked to the side and then glared at me. Doubt it. There's no way it's a coincidence. Well then, oh, how do we know we can believe that legend anyway? We don't have a choice. Weird things are happening to our planet, and that legend is our only lead. We have to give it a shot, at least. Azora yawned as she rested her head on her paws. I didn't know what to say. I mean... What would you say in this situation? I don't care what that legend says. There's no way I would destroy this world. Obviously, that legend has some holes in it. No, I don't believe it at all. I do, however, think that the destined pairs are real and that we may be able to save this planet. She glared. You humans are so naive. You're full of empty words. We've dealt with your kind before. You think you know everything, don't you? I couldn't find the words to back myself up because some part of me knew that she may be right. I sighed and looked down at the floor. What are we going to do? I think Polary wants us to search for the others, she replied in a more serious tone. Then we save my species, and I guess the earth if we have time. Talk about a weird sense of humor, ignoring the, her last threat. I was filled with an explosion of confidence. Yeah, wait, who's Polary? Alzora giggled. Oh, he's that big, scary black dragon. He's kind of like our leader, so he acts all tough, but I think he's a nice guy deep inside. He did take in Beckett, after all. Oh, that guy, Beckett. I remember him. Wasn't he the dorky, green-haired guy? I asked. Yep, that was me. Spoke a soft and gentle voice. The voice seemed to carry an innocence of sorts, but also a sense of sadness. I turned around to find the tall boy staring at me. Why are you in my room? How? I screamed. Azora was just as startled as I was. Well, I kind of saw Azora, so I thought I would stop by. By the way, Azora, I did give Whisper some information beforehand. I made sure the teacher would give her a shortened version of the legend for her writing assignment, he mumbled shyly. Oh, well, that's nice, I yelled sarcastically. How was I supposed to know it meant anything? That is beside the point. Haven't either of you heard of knocking? Ugh. I had no choice but to face palm. Knock, knock, knock. Crap, you guys have to get out of here, I whispered to Beckett and Elzora as I attempted to push them out of the window. What do you want? I yelled over my shoulder. Hey, mom said to make sure your room is clean. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. My brother said in an annoyed voice. Can't you do it some other time? I shouted as I stuffed Beckett into my closet, giving up on pushing him out the window. Azora, fly away, hide, do something. Who are you talking to? My brother asked, confused. Azora flew out the window the moment I opened the door. Psh, I wasn't talking to anyone. Nope, not a soul, just being here. He raised an eyebrow and barged into the room. He checked under the bed and glanced at my dressers. Whatever. I say it's good enough. See ya. And with that, he was out of the door. Okay, you know what, guys? Let's get out of here. I sighed in relief.
that is all for chapter two today. And I know it's a bit of a shorter chapter, but things will start to pick up as we continue with the series. But have a great day, guys. Hope you enjoyed. And again, always leave comments if you have, well, any comments. All right. See you next time. Bye.